My name is Scott Hardy, and I'm a volunteer firefighter for ESD2 in Bastrop, Texas. These are my experiences and perspectives from the 123-acre Yogi Fire. These are the conditions we don't want to see, but, but they happen. We have drought conditions, high temperatures, it's 103 degrees, winds gusting 25, 30 miles per hour. The fire has passed the Howl Ridge now. It's in the trees. I don't think we can call it anything but torture right now. I answered the tone and started solo from Station 3, and I quickly tied in with another brush truck. Uh, Howl Division in command, that gravelly Oaks Drive, the fire has crossed that. We need to go farther uh, west, northwest on this. I'm going to try to find your road. These buildings that I'm projecting down here are full of antique cars, and we're going to make our stand here. It was great to see a firefighter I hadn't worked with in at least five years, Dustin Wobus. I was so grateful to have another set of hands and eyes. This spot right here is actually, it's an airstrip, it's a private airstrip. And to the left of this advancing fire is the, the little plane hangar and, and the resident's house. So we were very motivated to stop the advancement uh, to protect that structure. Wind is still going and spot outs are happening uh, across. But we were given it heck. And, and certainly, uh, like I said, motivated. Later, Chief Bland right here said something very profound. He said that it wasn't necessarily a defensible space, but it slowed the advancement of it uh, just enough so that we could get resources to the head of that fire. The residents had evacuated, but this sweet dog had not. Her name is Tater Two, and she kind of became our mascot for a few days out here. We had plenty of spot outs to deal with, and, and we had an airdrop, several of them. Our water drops are coming from a uh, Sikorsky, I think it's an S61N. The group is called HTS, and they are top notch out of Oregon. And we really wanted to mind our P's and Q's on a, on a water drop. That's a thousand gallons. That's 8,000 pounds. Like two big giant pickup trucks in terms of weight just slamming down. Good, so we took cover out of precaution, but these guys were so specific with their drops. It was, they were highly skilled. Amazing to watch. And just coincidentally, about five days before, Captain Donaldson and I stopped by because we saw them staged at Smithville Airport. They invited us onto the tarmac. They gave us a tour. It was great to shake hands with these these talented firefighters. And, and we told them, with the current weather conditions and forecasts, we might see you soon. And we didn't realize that soon. Between this and, and the dozers, the Texas Forestry Service, all the mutual aid from other responding agencies, we, we were starting to, to make progress to, to fight toward, toward some kind of containment. Dustin and I just kept finding some really nice hot spots to uh, douse. When we first ran up on this jackpot, we thought, oh, this is going to be a challenge. Here. But it was actually uh, an oxbow. Way. You know, there was a dozer yeah, line all the way around it, so it was extremely manageable. Marco from Tyson. And he was also my limb assistant. He would he would literally lift some of these limbs. We didn't have time to pull out the chainsaw at that point of the fire. Just work our way through the dozer lines. And I, I didn't mind scratching a brush truck. It's a brush truck, but I didn't want to knock a light bar off. So as the day is starting to wind down and we have promising uh, uh, containment, a structure fire pops. We were only about two miles from it, and we hauled to it, quick and dirty, and I mean, we pounced on it like white on rice. It was a metal shed, you know, full of contents, and the garage was right next door, and the house was right across from it, so it, it was just perfect timing of, of, of resources and talent, just all in that one moment. So as this moon was coming up uh, on the east, and our, our sun was setting in the west, it kind of set this optimistic tone. You could just feel it. It was beautiful, but also, that's the TFS uh, hand crews, they're heading out. Those are amazing workers. Uh, the vibe was just, no other way to describe it except just positive. It was just a great, honest day's work as a firefighter. And um, as we turned it over to 
the overnight crew, who, by the way, these two had already put in, I think, 12 hours. So this is Dustin and Aaron. But I slept great that night. I mean, containment was looking positive, and I was ready for the next day. Got up early before the uh, the heat and the winds, and uh, just heavy mop-up. And I'm, I'm working with Amber Sparks. That's <laughs> Amber Sparks. That's her real name. She had to be a firefighter, right? Fantastic firefighter. She and I have worked together uh, quite a few times on some pretty big events. This is what I'm looking for out here. This type of hot spot. All it's going to take is a little wind, and that's going to start running again. So I'm going to hit it hard from the yard. <laughs> I'm going to douse it. The pace of mop-up is entirely different. You know, and most of the time, you don't have to be stingy with your water. You know, you, you have to conserve it sometimes when you're fighting it aggressively and you have such a limited capacity. But today, we can make as many trips as possible. I can now tell just by looking at this, it's got tremendous stored heat. It just geysers up. I love watching the water literally boil coming out of there. It's very gratifying to me. And what I initially did when I first started wildland firefighting is I'd kind of call it done at this point. Oh yeah, that's good enough. Guaranteed, I'm going to get called back out there. Right to the same spot that I didn't mitigate effectively. We had a big snag that had a cat face on it and it fell on that dozer line. And thanks to ESD2, now that I'm Sawyer certified, I can take care of it. Just limb this thing out and make a nice clearing so we could uh, get through. The great thing about Amber is she and I have a very similar sense of humor. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna ask you your opinion. Like, what is it, 104 degrees? Heat index is Like four. 110 or something? Probably. So, yeah, hot. But have you noticed that when we get next to the fire, those hot embers, you come back out here, it's like air conditioning. Yeah, and especially in the shade. I can stay out here forever. Not so much. They're not gonna do your jobs. <laughs> I seriously do wanna say this. The fact that I'm working with that young lady today is like, it's such a blessing. That sugar sand had turned to like 10x sugar, you know, powdered sugar. It, it, it really was a force to be reckoned with. There's only about 12 inches of clearance for this barbed wire, and I, I just have this distinct ability to get flat and go under it, and Amber captured it. Hey, if we need to, we cut that fence line. But, you know, the property owner really appreciates it, and, and they don't have to lose livestock. This was a heck of a couple of days. It really was. But look, we didn't want for anything. Schlotsky sandwich? We had the best rehab. Never ran out of water to, to, to drink or to, to put on the fire. And people like Freddie right here just got on his tractor and helped. Did an amazing job. This young man right here with a flat shovel, just giving it heck trying to save his house. And here's another fantastic neighbor just out there to help. There are so many people that went into helping mitigate this fire, everyone at Incident Command. And thank you every taxpayer in Bastrop County. You know, that the equipment we use, it, 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 it comes from you. Every dispatcher, every LEO, there's, I can't even recognize or, or photograph or video them. But if you were there, you know what you did. And I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, thank you. At almost every firefighter family get-together, our Chief Gill right here says the same thing. He says, we would not be able to do what we do without the support of our families. Period. Christine is my family. I bring my uh, T-post driver. The problem is this isn't T-post. This is wider and does not fit in the hole of this. So I have a very nice person who's holding this. Firefighters have a couple of rules. Like if you're healing a ladder, you do not look up. This ain't a ladder, but I told her, you you have no eye protection. Look down, I'm banging on this piece of metal. You have to see, this is my view. <laughs> if you ever find anybody like Christine, do yourself a favor, drop everything and marry her and be good to her. <laughs> Yeah. You better do this. 
You're strong. Look at those arms. Wow. See? This is a good workout. Like, this literally is what you could do. Just this is it. the new workout. It's, it's the T-Post driver workout. It's hammer, hammer time. time. Oh, and you did the... Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, 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 How many years have I had that? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, what? Dun, dun, oh. Dun, dun, dun. Can't touch it. Dun, 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 dun. Christine has a rich history of spontaneous 90s dance breaks. Look at this broom mug. I know, brand new brooms, no. big brooms. I'm a freak. I like a girl with a broom. No one's got me in a Burger King bathroom. Humpty. Do the Humpty Hump. Why do you do the Humpty Hump? Humpty. Oh, no, Humpty. Something wrong with your leg? He had a leg. He had a leg. He did. Remember? <laughs> Are you okay? Humpty. I think I saw her. This is happening right now. I saw the movie in 89 that came out. I was 11. I never saw this dragging. This is not a dance. This is called a stroke. This is called... I do not... I'm not going to say anything critical. I do not want her to change. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when you commit to dancing hammer time with the actual hammer time... You did it! I know. You did it! You made it look easy. Yeah, some Diet Dr. Pepper there. Alright, where's my pillow? Yeah, get your pillow there. Take a little nap. And remember y'all, be safe and have a plan and continue to be good to one another and live to ride another day. I thank you. <laughs>